Light that spark fire nation. JLD here with an audio masterclass on bootstrapping your way to millions. How a law school dropout builds profitable companies using virtual assistants. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Ravi Abuvala on the mic. He's the founder of Scaling with Systems, a business accelerator that works to bootstrap and scale their clients' businesses, leveraging elimination, automation, and fully trained overseas assistants. In the past 14 months, he's scaled scaled two seven-figure businesses with less than $1,000 of his own capital and four commission-based employees. And today, Fire Nation will be talking about going from $300 a month to $300,000 a month, what Ravi had to change to make that happen, how to build a machine that turns strangers into high-ticket clients in seven and a half days, and how to leverage virtual assistants to run 90% of your company, and so much more, Fire Nation, when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Fire Nation, you're trying to grow your business, but the white space in your calendar says otherwise. If you're interested in learning how you can get a virtual assistant to book you five to 10 appointments a day, then this free training is for you. Visit scalingwithsystems.com slash cash to sign up today. scalingwithsystems.com slash cash. If you want 2020 to be your best financial year ever, you need to join Russell Brunson's free masterclass where he shares the exact blueprint of what the top 1% of ClickFunnels users are doing differently that the other 99% are not. Register today at eofire.com slash secrets. That's eofire.com slash secrets. Ravi, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. What is going on, Fire Nation? Thank you guys for lending me your ears. I've been listening to this podcast for quite a while now, and it's a little surreal experience to (laughs) be on this end of it. Um, So this morning, I'm thinking, right, because like I said, I've listened to this for a very long time, and I'm like, I know John's going to ask me something that a lot of people don't know. And like any online digital marketer, you know, my life's an open book. And so I was like, what? So I'm going to share with you guys something that literally one person in this entire world knows. And it's funny that I'm, I'm bringing it out on this podcast here. But about a year ago in July of 2019, I had this weird itch and I ended up actually selling all of my stuff in Florida in about a week, including my car. I just junked it. And I moved to Spain um, and I lived in Spain for about 45 days and I was just hopping coastal city to coastal city, working on businesses, working with my clients. And while I was in a coastal city in Spain, I'm not going to say what so people don't look up uh, what I'm about to tell you. (laughs) But while I was in a coastal city in Spain, I don't drink. I drink a few times a year and I was out at this uh, pretty cool jazz club and it was like two, three in the morning, which is in Spain when they're just getting started, really. And uh there's a brawl breaks out right where I'm at at the bar. I'm literally order, uh, ordering like a soda at the bar and a, just a brawl b- breaks out right next to me and ends up that I try to break the brawl up. The police come. Uh, they come up to me. I speak decent Spanish because I've lived abroad for a while, but not good enough to get me out of the situation. <laughs> I, I actually end up spending the next three and a half hours in a drunk tank in a small jail cell in a coastal city in Spain. Uh, and it took him a while to even, I had to give him my, find my passport and show him all that stuff. And I finally got out of it. And, uh, yeah, I've only, the only other person that knows is someone that met me the next day and they wondered why I looked so <laughs> awful. But, uh, my parents don't know. Nobody knows that story. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, a convict in Spain. Okay. Well, listen, there's only a couple of listeners. So fire nation, keep it to yourselves here. Like, you know, not a big deal. Ravi. <laughs> so, uh, I want to start off on a little bit of a somber note, because as I shared Fire Nation during the introduction, we're going to be talking about bootstrapping your way to millions, but and many of us have dealt with someone in our lives that we love who has dealt with some form of this, but your dad, Ravi, had stage four cancer. So talk to us about that and how that situation caused you to throw it all away. Yeah, awesome question. So, you know, whole life was going to be a lawyer and that was like the that was the goal was law school was the number one priority. And in order to be a lawyer, you have to take what's known as a law school admission test. And you have to really score highly on it if you want to go to a great law school, which I did. And so I took a year off after graduating from college and I was about to start studying for this law school admission test. And about three days after I graduated, I got a call from my dad who lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I was in Florida at the time. And he told me the news he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And like John says, 
you know, everyone here has experienced cancer in some way or the other, but it's like when it's yourself or someone as close as your dad, it's a whole different experience and uh, kind of threw me for a loop. And so I ended up packing all my stuff up, moving up to Atlanta, Georgia. And for the next year, I would do wake up at 4 a.m., work out until 5. Then from 5 to 8, I would be studying for this law school admission test. Then about 8 to 5, I would be doing chemo and radiation with my dad every single day, Monday through Friday. And then when I got home at about six o'clock, I'd be studying until 11 midnight every single night back again on the law school admission test. So it was quite the surreal experience. Um, I'm really, really blessed to say my dad's been about two years um, in remission. So I just actually visited him in, in Savannah, Georgia nice. two days ago. I was just seeing him. But what it really did open up for me was how fragile life was. Yeah. And I was kind of going down a route that I think somebody else wanted me to go down. And I read a really awesome book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F And it kind of, I was just like, okay, I'm doing this for all the wrong reasons. And I just decided, you know what? I took the law school admission test because I spent 18 years preparing for it. I actually scored in the top 10% of test takers in the United States. I got into my dream schools, top schools in the nation. Uh, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to go work at this Italian restaurant down the road and try to figure out this entrepreneurship thing. Well, I love that you did that because I actually took it one step further than you, which was one step too far. And I actually went to law school. I spent a semester there and hated it from about the second week in. Uh, but, you know, everybody hated it. So I just figured, hey, this is just how, what everybody does. They just hate law school. I mean, that's kind of part of the process, especially the first year. Um, but man, I had to look in the mirror one day and say, like, did I literally set myself up for success, like doing the right thing, you know, getting a scholarship, an army scholarship in college, and then spending eight years as an officer just to spend the rest of my life doing something I hate? Like, absolutely not. So I had to pull the plug and it was not easy. But for me, it all comes back to the sunk cost fallacy, Fire Nation. Like so many people are doing what they do today because of decisions they made yesterday. Like every day is a new day to take a new decision and start a new path if you want that new path. And you, Ravi, have been able to do a new path and you actually went from making $300 a month, I don't know if that was at the Italian restaurant or doing something else, to making now over $300,000 a month. I mean, you're rivaling a lot of my income reports. So brother, what had to change? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I know. By the way, I absolutely love that you guys have the income reports Thank on you. the website. That is the, I, I will tell you, that is one of the coolest things. As someone who analyzes websites like for a living, <laughs> I, one of the coolest things I've seen yet. I absolutely love that. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and also just to add on to the last point you had too, I think one of my favorite quotes is just because you spend a lot of time making a mistake doesn't mean you should continue making Ooh. it. And, and that Ooh. was exactly what went through my mind when I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm still relatively young, right? I don't want to keep on playing that fiddle. So yeah, so essentially the biggest thing that had to change for me was, uh, first of all, I needed to figure out a, a profession or a job where I wasn't trading my time for money. So you, obviously you make enough money that you know that you don't trade your time for money. You have digital products, you have affiliate partnerships, ads, yep. whatever it is. And I knew that if I was going to be a lawyer, even if I was going to become the top 1% of lawyers in the United States and I was making a few million dollars a year, I'd still be trading my time for money. And I just knew Robert Kiyosaki, all these other guys, just like, that's not how you kind of do it. So uh, I pretty much Googled online how to make money online. Um, I stumbled across digital marketing as a whole uh, and kind of started going down that journey. And about... In the first eight months, I had no money, $3,000 totally. Um, and then I started learning about lead generation and systems and processes and virtual assistants and like having someone doing 300 to 500 pieces of outreach for me every single day. And as soon as that started happening, my calendar started filling. And I realized I was just the biggest thing that changed on answer your question was I was focusing on the wrong things in my business. I was spending the first eight months trying to be the best Facebook advertiser in the world, the best, you know, bat, uh, website creator, social media. But I, I had no real world experience. And I think. 40 years ago, you could have had the best of something and people would have noticed who you are. But I would argue that in today's noise driven world where you're hit with thousands of brands every single day, it's not only that you need to have an incredible back end product, but you need to have consistent new leads, consistent people seeing who you are, attention around your name, your brand, your company in order to actually start closing deals and then to be able to service those people. And so that's what I did. I started focusing more on what we talk about setting appointments and taking appointments. And in about two and a half years, I haven't had an empty calendar for myself or my sales guys since then. And that was the biggest change for our company was not just focusing on delivering that, that incredible product, but delivering it and letting as many people know what we're doing as possible. Fire Nation, I hope that you're really taking in what Ravi's saying. I mean, all of these nice quotes and all of the processes and all of these systems that he was 
able to apply to make these changes, I mean, that's how you get to where you want to be in life. And Ravi, you've been able to actually build a machine. And this machine turns strangers into high ticket clients in 7.5 days. And I love how specific you are with that. Like if it was like seven to nine days, they'd be like, oh, you know, tell me more. But like the fact that it's 7.5 days, like I'm really curious. So talk to us about that process. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a marketer at heart now. So I, I know that those specific keywords <laughs> are, are drawing you out here. Um, yeah, so for everyone listening to this, it, but it's I didn't make that number up, right? So we actually track our sales cycle inside of our company and a lot of our clients' companies. And we're able to convert five figure clients uh, for our company in about seven and a half days from the day that we do the piece of outreach to the day that they pay us is about seven and a half days on average. And the way that we've kind of set that up is just like what I was saying a second ago. Everyone should imagine, like if you can have a machine in your business, right, to the point that you're fully removed from it, because that's what a machine is, uh, your whole life will change. So imagine this, on the front end of the machine is your traffic source, right? You're gonna have me being on a podcast with John, or me doing outreach, sending email, Facebook messages, LinkedIn messages, whatever that is. Or it could be Facebook ads, it could be YouTube ads, it could be me speaking on stage. It could be a billboard, a plane that's flying with my name on it, whatever it is. My name's getting out there to people. All of those traffic sources I'm driving to pretty much one central location, whether it's a blog post, it is uh, you know, a video sales letter, it's a webinar, it is my actual physical location of my, my business, whatever it is. Right? I want to offer these people something in order for their information. And then you kind of push them gently along this machine, this sales funnel here, and you use both automation and delegation to make it happen. So you have, whenever someone hits on your website, you have retargeting ads that show testimonials and client results. Like we have hundreds and hundreds of client testimonials from people that have made money with us, and those are all ads when people hit our website. Or we do email marketing campaigns whenever they give us their email, showing them the success that we've had and showing them these pieces of content in order to nurture them more and more. And then we also have sales reps. I have virtual assistants that'll pick up the phone call and say, hey, John, I saw you downloaded our free course on how to scale uh, your company to the millions, but you didn't book a time with us. How What do you think of the free course? Mm-hmm. And then we're going to get you to move over to the booked appointment calendar. And so if you're able to have consistent traffic lead generation coming in, you have an awesome piece of content that people are coming to, and then you have these little automation retargeting and virtual assistants pushing them along the funnel, then when people finally get on the phone with you at the end of that, They've been. They've had probably eight to ten hours of content that they've consumed of yours by that point, and now they're not asking your sales guys who are you and what you do. They're asking, is this specifically going to help where I am in my business? And they're usually going to pull out their credit card by the end of that call. I love that follow up. I mean, Fire Nation, the dollars, the cents, the revenue. It's in the follow up. I mean, sometimes people see that little nudge, you know, and plus they know that you're for real as well. And when they actually see something online, they're like, okay, like maybe it's going into this massive funnel. But when somebody actually calls them and says, hey, we want to actually talk to you. Like I know that we said this like in our copy, but we actually mean it. We're proving it now by calling you. Like let's get you booked. Like let's make this happen. That is where the follow-up is so critical. And one thing that I love about today's online world is the ability to build lifestyle freedom. I mean, I just love that visual visualization of you bopping down the Spanish coast and just kind of like, you know, going to jazz clubs by night, working at cafes by day. How have you leveraged overseas virtual assistance that is now running 90 plus percent of your company? Talk about that. The first ever virtual assistant I got, her name is Mel Jane. She's going to listen to this 100%. Shout out to you, Mel Jane. She's based, out of, <laughs> she's based out of the Philippines. And I'm not going to go really deep into the Filipino culture or why it really works for you know a lot of U.S.-based companies or first world countries, whatever it is. But there's a lot of reasons why we love the Philippines. I have a full, uh, fully tr- um, a 30,000 square foot training center in the Philippines that we actually train virtual assistants for our clients that join our program. So they're getting kind of a done for you virtual assistant. But the reason that VAs work so well and they give you this freedom is because, you know, most people whenever, you know, they're listening to these podcasts, right, or, or they're joining coaching programs or they're joining another service, whatever it is, like they don't need more knowledge, right? They just need more action. And I think a virtual assistant is really great because it gives you the ability to, to take action, Uh, But someone else is doing it for you. And then because of the currency conversion right there, it actually doesn't cost you but a few dollars an hour to have somebody do that for you. And so we've really pushed the boundaries as far as what's humanly possible for virtual assistants. So for my company, our clients' companies, our VAs are doing payroll, they're doing bookkeeping, they're doing appointment setting, they're doing appointment confirmation, they're doing lead nurturing, like I said a second ago. Um, They're doing Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, click funnels. I mean, these are all things that you know, 10 years ago, you'd have to pay a Harvard graduate tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars for, and you're getting for a few thousand dollars a year, which is an incredible amount of money for them. 
Uh, and then on top of it, you know, I was in Colombia last year, once again, really spur of the moment trip. And I actually, my mom's going to listen to this. She's going to laugh. <laughs> I, I forgot it was my mom's birthday. And, um, I totally blanked on that. And I ended up, at, I was going paragliding and I ended up messaging my virtual assistant, Melody, and I said, hey, I need you to find a bike or a bike for my mom on Facebook Marketplace and get it delivered over to her for her birthday. And that's exactly what my virtual assistant did. She got in contact with my sister, figured out a bike that was the best color and that my mom would like, ended up negotiating a price and delivery, and then delivered it to my mom while I was like paragliding over <laughs> uh, the mountains in Medellin, Colombia. So it's, it's incredible. I think delegation in general is really, really great for a person to do. But I think a lot of people are afraid to do that. And also the costs associated with like paying someone 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a year. I think virtual assistants give you the ability to really do almost delegate anything you want, but at the same time do it for a lot lower cost point. Lots of great value bombs here, Fire Nation, as well as ways to make sure you never forget your mother's birthday. I mean, I will say one thing. <laughs> my VAs know my parents' birthdays, and they will make sure that I will never forget that because it's important stuff. And we have a lot of great things coming up, Fire Nation, as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors. In Fire Nation, quick note before we jump into our sponsors, today's first sponsor is Ravi with his company, Scaling with Systems. So if you've been liking what you've heard so far in this interview, don't miss this incredible opportunity. Listen up close. Fire Nation, you know that automated lead generation for your business is necessary for you to grow, but most techniques can take months to implement without even knowing if they will make a difference. That's why we've partnered with Scaling with Systems to give you a simple three-step training that teaches you how to create a cash machine for your business to spit out high-ticket clients every 6.5 days. The best part, it can be set up in under 10 minutes and has been proven by over 600 entrepreneurs in 23 industries. Inside this free training, you'll learn where to find fully trained $3 per hour virtual assistants who can send 300 to 500 pieces of outreach a day for you using this one weird email hack. The exact messaging scripts and channels they use to easily book four to five appointments in your calendar per day. The new model of finding, hiring, and training sales reps that have them closing appointments for you in 14 days and so much more. Get ready to learn how you can wake up every day to a calendar filled with qualified prospects without having to spend thousands of dollars on ads and complicated funnels. It's all all in this free training. Visit scalingwithsystems.com slash cash to sign up today. That's scalingwithsystems.com slash cash. Fire Nation, the quality of your business funnels will make or break your business. But no need to worry, I have exactly what you need to succeed in 2020. So if you don't have a funnel yet, or if your current funnel doesn't convert, or if you simply need more traffic to your funnel, I have the perfect training for you. The founder of ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, has put together an incredible training that will deliver everything you need to know to make 2020 your best year ever. During this free masterclass, you'll learn the number one funnel secret, the number one conversion secrets, and the number one traffic secrets to help you grow your business faster than you ever could have imagined. And these secrets aren't just assumptions. They're proven tactics backed by a team that's filled with funnel experts. Register today at eofire.com slash secrets. That's eofire.com slash secrets. So Ravi, we're back and we already talked about a few things that you can be delegating to your virtual assistants. Give us a couple other things and maybe some specific examples that you've done successfully as far as delegating um, within your company. You know, some of those first key things we can take off of our plate, but also follow up with what do we never, never, never delegate? Awesome, awesome question. So the first thing for about 90% of our clients, the number one priority whenever they join, they start working with scaling with systems is we try to get them the lead generation taken off their plate because it's a thing that requires... Uh, I think I would argue is the most important aspect of a company, yet it's a thing that falls by the wayside, right? Because if you really think about lead generation, a lot of the times it's either you trying to figure out paid advertising or it's you trying to do cold calls or cold emails or cold messages, which if anybody knows anything about that, an overwhelming majority of the time, meaning 90% or more, people are either not responding or telling you to you know, go somewhere where the sun doesn't <laughs> shine. And so it's, it's very easy for your brain, the way it's wired, to be like, oh, well, that stuff is bad. That stuff is hurtful. I'm not going to do it. And so then you just focus on, you know, how to make your website a little bit more pretty or, you know, what kind of colors your logo should be or whatever it is, because you're not going to do the scary stuff. And so 
about eight or nine times out of 10, the first thing we do is we say, hey, who's your target market? What do they look like? Where can we find them, right? So a lot of the times we're looking for uh, places online. I think LinkedIn is a great resource or, or other areas where you can find quality uh, aspects. So I ran a lead, a lead generation company for real estate agents. We would go on Zillow and search. You can actually search transaction volume, people that are doing transactions, and cross-reference it with high uh, average customer ratings. And then we'd find people that were doing hundreds of transactions a year that were also rated really highly, so that means they really had a great business. And then on top of it, you could see people that were already paying Zillow in order to have their ads run by Zillow. And Zillow, I'm not going to trash talk anybody here, but you know they they're, they cost a lot of money. And so what we could do is have our virtual sense, hey, find those people on these websites then Google their name, then find their email address, then send this crafted email that I've already written for you, we write them for our clients, and say, hey, here's who we are, here's what we do, here's a bunch of testimonials, here's a bunch of case studies, um, would you like to speak or book a time? And when you can do that, where you're finding quality emails or quality LinkedIn profiles, and then you have a really, really strong message, uh, and then you're doing that follow-up that we had kind of talked about a second ago in the machine, then you're really converting at almost like a 10% conversion rate to uh, a, a, an appointment. So you're imagine you send 100 messages out, you get 10 people to book an appointment with you or become a lead with you. And then you start sending hundreds and hundreds and thousands of thousands and you start building up your sales team and, and your lead generation guys. And so the first thing we always say is to, is to delegate out the lead generation because Let's say you delegated out the back end fulfillment. Let's say it's like running Facebook ads or it's doing administrative work or whatever it is. Well, if you don't have new sales coming in, then that that position is kind of redundant, right? You're not. It doesn't matter even if they're the best, you know, fulfiller in the world, even if they're the best person at Facebook ads in the world. If you don't have people trying to pay you in order to run these Facebook ads or to pay you to do this one thing, then it doesn't matter. So the the thing that I tell people they should never, ever, ever, ever delegate, no matter what although obviously there's edge cases here, um, is some, uh, is sales a lot of the time and, and to a virtual assistant, because I know people that will, Oh, I'm going to delegate everything out, including my sales process. And although we do have our VAs running sales for us, I would argue that sales is the absolute last thing as an entrepreneur, as a business owner in a service-based business or a high ticket business or SaaS. It's one of the last things you should delegate out because no one's going to sell your product as good as you do. And if you can have the rest of your company delegate it out to where lead generation is happening without you, lead fulfillment is happening without you, and then you just wake up in the morning and from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6, 7 at night, you're just on sales calls, then you're going to really refine that process. You're going to really create kind of a ramping Bible you can teach other sales guys to onboard, and you're going to have the highest conversion rate possible. And I think that's when a lot of the kind of the magic happens. Fire Nation value bombs are being dropped. And... We need to talk about something because, Ravi, you may be bursting some people's bubbles right now. And I think that's a good thing because so many people in this world think, oh, I'm just going to go raise some money to fund my business and life will be good. I'll pay myself a salary from all this money that I'm going to raise and then I'll sell my company for billions. Why is startup capital for a business a myth and how does it ruin lives? It's so interesting, right? So we've worked with Fortune 500 companies. I've worked with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. We've we've worked with been really privileged to work with a lot of large SaaS companies that have gotten funding. Then I've worked with SaaS companies that have started with zero dollars, a few hundred dollars, and we've scaled it up, and and then they've had an exit on it. And in my opinion, I think that like other things in life, you know, gluttony or too much of something is a bad thing. And when some of these companies come in. And they have hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions of dollars in funding. Well, they kind of lose sight of what's really important. And when you have that much money in funding, well, then you don't really have to make sure 100% from the beginning that your product is perfect. You don't have to make sure 100% that it, your marketing resonates with your uh, your clientele, right? You don't have to make sure 100% that your churn is as low as possible because you have this kind of like this this room to wiggle with. Where I'd I'd say I'd argue that. The better version of that, although it's more difficult, is to figure out how to be profitable from day one when you launch your company, right? So a lot of our clients, they're coming to us either leaving a nine to five job or they have an idea for a business. And we're saying, hey, before you even figure out how to actually execute on the idea, let's see if people are even interested in this idea first. So then we'll do those same lead generation strategies. And like there's a guy, Kevin, who's launched a podcast accelerator, ironically enough. He was about to create the whole back end of it. I was like, let's even see if people want to do this. He's able to sell fifteen thousand dollars worth it in seven days. He didn't had he hadn't created one piece of content yet, but he had the general idea of what he was going to sell, and then obviously deliver on the back end. So if you can first make sure that you have a product market fit, that people are willing to pay you, you do the research, you understand what they want, you 
understand how they want it in their language, what's the minimum viable product you have to deliver, and then you're able to give that to them, and then you take those first few people, create case studies out of them, and then you start running paid traffic or, or more outbound lead generation using those case studies, your first successful people, you can create this machine where you're putting a dollar in, you're getting four dollars out, and you don't have to pay any investors back. You don't have to owe anybody any money, and you don't answer to anybody. Figure out how to be profitable from day one. Love that concept, Fire Nation. I hope you're absorbing that. And Ravi, let's be honest. COVID is hammering a lot of businesses right now, frankly, because they're just not adjusting to the new reality. How are you making more money during COVID than ever before? So we're really blessed in the sense of, you know, we're helping a lot of companies transition from the brick and mortar in-person business to the online. And whether it is transforming them totally from brick and mortar to the online business or whether it's adding an online aspect to it, um, we've been able to do that successfully for a lot of different companies. And I think it's really interesting because COVID or not, right, COVID was obviously crazy, but COVID or not, at some point, there had to be this inflection point where you had to either get on the bus or, or, or you got left behind. And I think COVID just kind of sped up that that cycle where, you know, I see these people doing these old form advertising methods. I mean, I was like, you know, in a urinal the other day and I was, <laughs> I was peeing on some guy's face from this, from that was running an ad for, uh, for real estate. And I'm right. like, what? people doing? What are they (laughs) spending these money on? I couldn't believe it. And so COVID kind of forced people in order to get on the bus or they got left behind. And my brother's a great example of it. He runs a few restaurants in the state of Florida. And, um, you know, we were able to kind of help him create the subscription plan service in order to do meal delivery. And a lot of our other clients as well, when they had in-person businesses, they were able to obviously mass for a really big thing. I had a good client of mine, Dara Holsworth. He was running a company or he technically had a nine to five pretty cushy management job. He got let go during COVID. He kind of followed what we talked about having the machine in place and he was able to sell $35,000 worth of mass in 24 hours uh, by just doing the lead generation outreach, finding some large hospitals right in the beginning that wanted it. And then he found a supplier on the back end. And so if you, if you kind of understand how online business works and you understand the lead generation aspect of it, then you're able to kind of shift your model to be a little more of a hyper-scalable back-end offer. So if you're an in-person restaurant, before everyone hated delivery and takeout because the margins were so right. low, but now if you can create some kind of subscription-based model where they're having three, five, ten meals a, a week or a month – then now you're creating recurring revenue that you never even have before. And you're actually going to start liking that even more than what you had otherwise. And same with real estate agents. I mean, and doctors doing these virtual e-commerce or telemedicine or whatever they call it as well. We set up a few of those. And so, you know, I think this is a really, really cool point. Over half of the Fortune 500 companies right now were created during times of recession. So I think that if you're listening to this right now and you have a business that you think is suffering, you think there's no way out, I would really challenge you to be like, Okay, if I have this problem, every single other person in this industry has this issue right now. And if I'm able to kind of pivot out of this or figure out a way to make money online in my company, in my business, which is very, very easy, uh, then I'm going to be ahead of everybody else. And that's when you kind of can start just consuming and hammering away at market share. And by the time everybody gets up and kind of dust ourselves off from everything happened here, you're going to be light years ahead of everybody else. Light years, Fire Nation. That mentality, always learning and focusing on serving the customer. Key, key, key things. Ravi, you've dropped countless value bombs. I think Fire Nation's head is spinning a little bit for obvious reasons, and this is going to be one of those re-listened to episodes because there's so much here. But if you could just really make sure that Fire Nation walked away with one key takeaway, what would that be? Yeah, I would say that the number one thing I would argue with everybody here is just ask yourself if something happened to me, if I got COVID, if I got hit by a bus, if someone I love got COVID, does my business going to continue to run without me? Mm. Can I remove myself totally from my company? And a lot of that comes down to, do you have kind of standard operating procedures? Do you have a, a rule book or a handbook in your company that someone else can kind of take from you? And God forbid anything were to happen to you, uh, you need to have that in place and you owe it to your clients, you owe it to your future clients, you owe it to your family in order to make sure that happens. So just sit down and ask yourself, like, do I have this machine set up? Do I have something so that I could go on vacation or I can get sick or anything can happen and we're still consistently producing cash flow and consistently producing results? Ravi, tell us how Fire Nation can connect with you, any call to action you have for us, and then we'll say goodbye. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, I would say that the best way to get in contact with me is either going to be Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. You can just type in Ravi Abuvala, R-A-V-I-A-B-U-V-A-L-A. I I have a pretty unique name, so it's pretty easy to find me. And then for anybody that is head is kind of spinning because I do have a a tendency to talk really fast and like drop a lot of information and kind of leave people wondering. I did create a pretty awesome course. I actually created a a version of it for uh, EOF for Entrepreneurs on Fire where I go a lot more in depth on what kind of messaging scripts you should be using, where you should be finding these actual virtual assistants, how much you should be paying them, what are the first things you give them, what outreach channels we use, Facebook ads, uh, LinkedIn ads, standard operating procedures, et cetera, et cetera. So you can build this machine for yourself and you guys can just go to scalingwithsystems.com slash EOF for Entrepreneurs on Fire. So scalingwithsystems.com slash EOF and you'll get a totally free course. It's 12 different modules long. I think there's like four and a half hours of content inside of there and that will be able to take you a lot more in depth that I wasn't unfortunately able to cover all on this podcast. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with and you've been hanging out with RA and JLD today, so keep up that heat. And if you head over to eofire.com and type R-A-V-I, it's pronounced Ravi, but R-A-V-I in the search bar, his show notes page will pop up with everything we've talked about, but of course your direct call to action, scalingwithsystems.com slash E-O-F. And you can, of course, find him on the socials. And I want to say thank you, Ravi, for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much, Sean. It was an absolute pleasure. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Ravi. And if you're ready to rock your own podcast, I have a free podcasting course where I teach you how to create and launch your very own podcast for free. (laughs) Visit freepodcastcourse.com. I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation, you're trying to grow your business, but the white space in your calendar says otherwise. If you're interested in learning how you can get a virtual assistant to book you five to 10 appointments a day, then this free training is for you. Visit scalingwithsystems.com slash cash to sign up today. Scalingwithsystems.com slash cash. If you want 2020 to be your best financial year ever, you need to join Russell Brunson's free masterclass where he shares the exact blueprint of what the top 1% of ClickFunnels users are doing differently that the other 99% are not. Register today at eofire.com slash secrets. That's eofire.com slash secrets.